Hey, yo, yo, yo. What up, guys, and welcome back to another one. And today I have something extremely special. Two things, actually. The first thing is that you guys requested this video an absolute ton. And when I mean a ton, it that's why. Because this video is going to be so helpful. This video is going to be so helpful for you guys. Hands down, one of the best videos, informative videos that I plan on giving. You know, I think it's just ideas. One of the best ideas to provide to you guys. That's a better explanation. So, this was a suggested video down in the comments. When you guys go suggest your comments down below, it helps me so, so much. I'm able to understand what you guys want and, and what you guys may not understand and that I might. I don't act like I'm the best. I'm, I just like to share my knowledge. You guys know. So, all my beginners out there and all my new subs, that's what the channel is about, is helping you guys. Yep, yep, check it out. The mud has dried, so all of my viewers that watched, hey, what are you doing, man? There's Jackson. You want in there? We mudded our blind with silt, and, uh, and now it's dry. So you can tell how nice it looks. I mean, it is just, this is what happens. It starts flaking off. So that silt mud is the way to go. Don't you think, boy? Don't you think so? He's tired. That video right there was suggested by one of you guys. You're like, hey, teach me how to mud a blind because I've never heard of doing that. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out as well. But I'm going to stop rambling. We're going to get after it, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you guys how to find them fields, know which ones they are, know which ones are going to be the hottest for when the season comes. Let's roll. So first off, guys, uh, the first thing to this, I am going to relate right off the bat. I am in Kansas, so a lot of my Midwesterns out there, you know, that Midwest fly line, uh, a lot of you are going to be in the same in the same book for the most 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 part most part. But here in Kansas, our corn, you know, this year it's not abundant. There's not an abundant field, you know, around my roots. There's not an abundance of corn. The fields that are corn, those are the ones that you have to get wrapped up this summer. That's our preseason prep on fields because of here in Kansas, probably it's not like Nebraska. Nebraska has a ton of corn. Corn down here is the number one want for geese or ducks or anything when they've been traveling on cold fronts where they've been pushed hard, travel for two hours, four hours at a time, they're going to be hungry. So they're going to be wanting that corn. So if you're like me and around your roost, there's always been limited corn fields or there's been half wheat, half corn, whatever it is right now, you need to be getting permission on them fields. The first day and two after a cold front and a big push, those birds are going to be wanting corn. It's the most filling and the most provide them to revitalize them and get them all back in shape. So here guys, here's a little example. This field last year I hunted one time. That being said, it wasn't corn last year. Now the years that this field has been corn, oh my goodness, we have awesome duck hunts, we have awesome Canada hunts, lesser and cackler hunts all day every day. This year it's back to corn. Now this field here, guys, this field is obviously cut wheat. This last season, this was our main go-to field because it was the only corn field in the area. This field and the last field I just showed you, the new corn field, are basically within the same section. So every year, guys, whatever roost, whether it's a sand pit, whether it's a town pond, whether it's whatever it is, a lake, wherever you found them birds roosting most of all, those fields, as long as there's crop around it, they're gonna be abundant. The thing is, is if you're in Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Colorado, any of us Midwesterns around here, we don't have corn planted all the time everywhere. So there's usually gonna be one or two fields within every roost that are gonna be money because they're corn. Now, believe me guys, don't get too bound up. We hunted a lot of winter wheat fields and a lot of bean fields just this last season. I'm not telling you that bean fields and wheat fields are bad. They're also, they cater. But what I'm saying is on those cold fronts, you can always expect big pushes of birds to want that corn. Woo, 
it is hot out here, let me tell you what. But guys, this is my little go-to secret, is finding them cornfields for me. Here in Kansas, like I said, it's not abundant, it's not everywhere, it's not like every other field is corn. So for me, we're gonna deal with hungry birds because of the big pushes, and as a scout, the main thing to learn as to being a good scout and having good hunts, learn your roosts first. Understand where the birds roost, where they're going to gather up and then in the morning get up and all go feed to the field together. A good scout always learns his roost first. That's a number one priority. But guys, if you find this beneficial to you, drop me a big old thumbs up right now. Show your boy some love. But these videos, I hope they're helping you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying them. I'm trying to pump them out for you guys and keep the summer waterfowl vibe going. I'm trying to keep you guys fed. Because you know we thirsty out here for some duck and goose action. God dang it! If you guys have any suggestions for videos, what you want to learn more. If you want to learn more about scouting, I have some shooting videos coming up for you guys that you guys requested. We're going to do some lay down blind shooting. Just got done editing this video and I came home I'm like, man, like I had said, I'm really targeting all you beginners out there. I really want to help you guys get better at goose hunting. A lot of you can go shoot ducks. You can it's easy to set little water duck spreads on marshes and shoot ducks. But this is one of those things for all you beginners out there. I'm trying to help you understand goose hunting in the field. And one thing like I was stressing is roost. I wanted to come back, give a little bit more input and information before we wrap this video up. It's all about roost. It's all about roost. So if you guys don't know what roosts are, roosts are where birds pile up to roost and that's to sleep overnight. They get their drink there and they get their rest there. In the mornings and afternoons when they get up to feed, they're gonna find the closest food source available, especially when it's cold. On warmer days, they like to fly and they might fly a little farther, but on those cold, cold days, you're gonna be looking for cornfields. So that's why I'm saying right now, all you guys that have been scouting, where you found those birds last year on those big roosts, that's where you need to go. You need to go back to your roost. If it's your hometown roost, if it's a sand pit, go drive around that sucker, find them cornfields. If it's a roost that's 40 miles away from your house or 10 miles, I don't care. Go look at it, go pull out your Onyx map, see who owns that cornfield and try to just get permission for it for the upcoming season. Roosts are the key to finding good fields. You're never going to find the X if you don't know where the roost is. It's easier to know where the roost is and follow the birds to the field rather than just find them a, a random field. Gotta know them roosts. So if you want me to do a video on roosts, if you don't know much about them, uh, I, 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 always, I, always, I always advocate not hunting the roost, hunting the fields around the roost until the end of the season and you want to bust them off and blow them out. That's fine. One big tip to remember is if you had a roost last year and the year before that and it, it's just held birds every year, it's going to keep holding birds. Birds are going to remember that roost. They're going to come back to it every year. So that's why I'm saying it's easy to find the targetable fields around big roosts. I feel like I'm just like repeating the same thing here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit beating the dead horse here. So if you guys understand what I'm saying about these roosts and cold fronts and hungry birds and corn, Drop me a huge thumbs up and let me know. And if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, how-to videos, anything, anything. If you want to see me do something stupid, let me know down below. Oh yes, oh yes. And we do still have some of them lanyards available, guys. So if you've been looking for a new lanyard to hold them duck and goose calls, I will link these in the description below. Go check them out. Very limited quantity available still. But I want to thank you guys for watching so much. Thank you for subscribing. All you new subs, I see you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys giving me your input on videos. It really lets me know what you guys want to see and what you guys want to learn. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace.